when running a real world application we use good processors for fast execution but processor speed alone can't make your application run fast one of the great ways to create a performance efficient application is to utilize multi threading hello everyone and welcome to this interesting video on multi threading in java assume we have an online banking system where users can sign in and access account information to enable multiple bank account holders to access the central system at the same time each time someone checks into their account online they receive a separate and unique thread this is where the concept of multi threading comes into play so stay till the end to learn more about multi threading in java with that let us take a look at the agenda for this video first we'll talk about what is a thread then we'll look at the life cycle of a thread in java then we'll talk about what is multi threading and then we'll look at what is the use of multi thread in java then we'll look at the advantages of multi threading finally we'll move on to implementing multi threading in java hands on But before we begin make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to receive regular updates from us So let us first begin by understanding what is a thread In Java a single thread is the smallest and lightest processing unit A thread class is used by Java to implement threads Threads are classified into two types user threads and daemon threads Daemon threads are used when we want to clean the application and are used in the background A user thread is created when an application first starts up Following that we can create a large number of user and daemon threads Moving on to the life cycle of a thread in Java starting with new the thread is created using the class thread class in this phase it will remain in this state until the program begins the thread it is also referred to as born thread second is runnable the thread instance is revoked with a start method on its page the scheduler is given thread control to complete the execution The scheduler decides whether or not to run the thread. Third is running. The thread state is changed to running when it begins executing. The scheduler chooses a thread from the thread pool and begins executing it in the application. Fourth is waiting. Waiting is the state in which a thread must wait because the application runs multiple threads. There is a need for thread synchronization. As a result, one thread must wait until the other thread is executed. As a result, This state is known as the waiting state. Finally, dead. This is the state in which the thread has been terminated. The thread is in a running state and will be in a dead state once it has finished processing. Now let us look at what is multi-threading. Multi-threading is a programming concept that allows an application to create a small unit of tasks that can be executed in parallel. When you use a computer, it runs multiple applications and distributes processing power to them. A simple program executes code statements one by one in sequence. This is a single threaded program. However, multi-threading occurs when a programming language supports the creation of multiple threads and passes them to the operating system to run in parallel. So what is the use of multi-thread in Java? Starting with concurrent programming, multi-threading is widely used in Java to implement concurrent programming. This means that multiple tasks can be executed concurrently within the same program which can improve performance and resource utilization. Second is GUI programming. In graphical user interface programming, multi-threading is used to keep the user interface responsive while performing long-running tasks in the background. For example, a program that downloads a large file over the internet can use a separate thread to perform the download while the main thread remains responsive to the user input. Third is network programming. Multi-threading is commonly used in Java for network programming, where multiple threads can handle incoming network connections and data processing simultaneously. Fourth is gaming and multimedia applications. Multi-threading can be used to improve the performance and responsiveness of gaming and multimedia applications that require real-time processing and rendering of audio and video. Finally, server-side programming. Multi-threading is often used in server-side programming to handle multiple requests from clients simultaneously. For example, a web server can use multi-threading to handle multiple requests from different clients concurrently. Now let us look at some of the advantages of multi-threading. First is responsiveness. In an interactive application, multi-threading allows a program to continue running even if a section is blocked or a lengthy process is being executed. which increases user responsiveness in a non multi threading environment a server listens for a request on a port processes the request and then resumes listening for another request 
because of the time it takes to execute a request other users are forced to wait unnecessarily instead passing the request to a worker thread while listening on a port is a better approach second is resource sharing only two techniques are available for sharing resources among processes such strategies must be explicitly structured by the programmer threads on the other hand by default share the memory and resources of the process to which they belong the advantage of sharing code and data is that it permits an app to execute multiple code threads in the same address space third is economy allocating memory and resources for process creation is a costly procedure because it takes time and space because threads share memory with the process to which they belong creating and switching between threads is less expensive in general creating and managing processes takes much longer than threads fourth is scalability the benefits of multi programming become clearer in multi processor architecture where threads can run in parallel on multiple processors it is impossible to divide processes into smaller jobs performed by different processors when there is only one thread regardless of the number of processors available a single threaded process could only run on one parallelism is increased by multi threading on multiple cpu machines finally better communication to improve inter process communication thread synchronization functions could be used furthermore sharing massive amounts of data across multiple threads of execution within the same address space allows for extremely high bandwidth low latency communication across multiple tasks within an application now let's move on to implementing multi threading in java hands on so let us quickly begin with the hands on i'm using the eclipse id so in java there are two ways of creating a thread we're going to look at one of them today and that is by having a class extend the thread class to do that i've already created a main class to that you're going to want to create a new java class to do that i've already created a main class to that you're going to want to create a new java class so i'm going to go ahead and right click here go to new and select class so i'm going to name this multi thread sample finish creating that and it does not matter what you call it but make sure you add extends thread so i'm going to go ahead and add extends thread So now to make this multi-threadable, all you have to do is override the thread classes run method. So type in public void run. Open curly braces. Since we are overriding thread class here, I'm going to just add at override. So I'm only doing this so that we have an understanding of what is happening here. All right. So what we have to do here is we have to write whatever code we want to implement using the threads. So I'm going to take a simple for loop to count up to the numbers one to five. So go ahead and type for int i equals one, i less than or equal to five, i plus plus, and open curly braces. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to print i so system dot out dot print ln i all right so just to make this a little more interesting i'm going to make it sleep between each number so that way we can watch it print each number so to do that so we can do that by just typing in thread dot sleep Thousand. So thousand milliseconds equals a second. So what we're basically doing is make it sleep for one second between printing each number. So it's going to throw you an error if you don't give in a try and catch exception here. So let's quickly type that out. Try. Close the try. Catch. Interrupted. Exception. E. and we're going just to open the curly braces and close it all right that's it now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our main file which is multi threading 
and we're going to start with creating an object of the multi-thread sample class that we have created. So to do that, what you have to do is multi-thread sample my sample equals new multi-thread sample. All right. So after doing that, what we have to do is we're going to call my sample dot start. Let's go ahead and add that my sample dot start. So now let's run it and see. So now that we can see that it has printed all the numbers one to five. So it is important to understand that if you call my sample dot run, it is not going to implement the thread simultaneously. So let me show you an example. Here I'm just going to copy this line. All right, I'm copied it and I'm pasting it here. And let's call this my sample two. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. My sample two here as well. All right. And we'll change the start to run in both the cases. Now let's run it and see what happens. I'm running it here. As you can see, it is printing the first set of numbers and then it's printing the second set of numbers, which is not how it's supposed to happen in multi-threading. Whereas if you use the start method, let's see what happens. Change both of them to start. And now let's run and see what happens. As you can see, it's printing both the set of numbers simultaneously. So now that you get the difference between start and run, all right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and change the code a little. I'm going to use the for loop here. Let's quickly remove whatever we've done here. Removing my sample two as well. All right, so I'm going to add a for loop for int i equals one, i less than or equal to five, i plus plus. So now that we have done that, so now I'm gonna quickly run and see it. As you can see, we have all the threads counting from one to four at the same time. All right, it is that simple to get started with multi-threading in Java. So in conclusion, multi-threading is an essential feature of Java that allows for the concurrent execution of multiple threads within a program. It can be used to improve the performance, responsiveness, and resource utilization in a variety of applications such as gaming, multimedia, network programming, and server-side programming. While multi-threading introduces certain challenges such as thread synchronization and deadlocks, careful design and implementation can help mitigate these issues. Overall, multi-threading is a powerful tool that can enhance the functionality and efficiency of Java programs. With that, we come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPad provides Java certification online training mentored by industry experts. The course link of which is given in the description below.